Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are so amazingly happy to have with us here a multi-hyphenate and super talented young lady named Lola Blanc. We're here to talk about her new short film, Pruning, starring the unbelievably talented and a website favorite, Miss Madeline Brewer. Can you tell us a little bit about this movie and say hello to everybody, Lola? Yes, hello. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so this is a film about a political commentator who um, goes a little bit too far in her rhetoric and discovers that she has actually inspired a mass shooting and she has to then contend with her feelings on that. I love that. And the thing is, I think that she does such a, Madeline does such a great job of, of gaining our trust as, as this person who is sort of vile. But mm -hmm. it's almost what I love about it is the way that you frame it. It's almost like a mask that she wears throughout her daily life that she takes off when she gets home. Mm, thank you. I love. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I mean, I think what I was interested in exploring, as well as my co-writer Jeremy Reiden, with this story was the idea of these people that you see on TV who, um, who know what they're saying. Like they know that when they're saying something that's a little bit extreme and a little bit incendiary, they know that's going to get the people fired up. And so we were wondering and wanting to ask the question, like, who are they when people aren't watching, and how much do they actually? believe that because i would suspect there's a there's plenty of it that they don't oh uh, I, and i love that i love that you asked that question because that's a question that especially in modern times gets asked a lot there's a particular scene in here where uh and, and it's the ending where some stuff goes down and i was wondering to myself what you were trying to do there not to give it away to people but is there meaning behind that last scene that i that maybe i didn't see or maybe uh because for me it's like it's like she's she's created something. I'm not going to use the exact term I want to use because that would give it away. But she sort of created a monster, and now she's trying to get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, how do I talk about it without talking about it? Um, but essentially, like, there are a couple different versions of like ways to describe what that meant to us, um, but it is a part of herself that she wants to die. Um, it is a part of herself that is interfering with her ambition. So however you interpret that, and obviously when people watch, they will know a little bit more what I am saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like the contending with different versions of yourself and who you have to be and who you have to not be anymore in order to proceed with the life that you want for yourself whether it's moral or not you know and that was the part that i loved is the juxtaposition between where she's at career-wise which is at an all-time high and where she is personally which given the events of the short are all-time low mm -hmm. and i i love i love how you frame that juxtaposition as as, as again, she's taking off the mask and when the mask is on, everything's good and, 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 and great. And when it's off, everything is terrible and nothing makes any sense because she's betrayed even her closest friend uh, in the short played by uh, Peyton Kennedy, right? Yes. Yeah, Peyton's uh, character gets sort of betrayed by her. I love that scene in the middle of, this, uh, of it where we get to finally see that mask in her real life. Mm -hmm. That scene oh. with Peyton. Oh, yeah. where Madeline's eyes just transfixed. I was like, she nailed it. She nailed I, it. She nailed it. I was so excited about that scene. I feel like it really takes a strong actor to be able to like, just from their eyes, like see that shift and see it like just totally, she like freezes over, like her face freezes over. I was just so excited about that. That's all her. I mean, obviously I would have, you know, I'm, working with her and I'm directing her and doing my best, but she's such a force on her own that like really, it, that's just a testament to her talent as an actress. And I wanted to ask you about how you even, how you got her to be part of your short, because she's a very talented actress, especially in the horror game. She was in Cam, which is a, a movie I, I love. Uh, how did you manage to, to get her? Yeah, like I, I wish it were honestly a more interesting story, but really it came down to that Jeremy knew someone who knew her. And the minute he said that we knew anyone who knew her, we were like, it has to be her. I cannot picture anyone else as this person. Um, but, you know, we sent it. We kind of hoped for the best. We didn't hear anything for a few months and we kind of thought it was dead in the water. And then 
if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what happened. Um, and then she like read it and was really excited about it. And we were like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I, I and I love it. I, I also really love her in the ultimate, uh, the ultimate playlist of noise, which I also really love. So I love that she's in this, and I love her, and I and I really liked your directorial style. There's a lot of simple mo camera movements that you make that sort of add so much to the the overall piece. Can you talk about being a director? Because you haven't done too much directing, right? This is my this was my sh third short, and I've directed a number. Yeah. Of videos but I haven't done a feature yet or anything um but directing is definitely my passion at this point I mean I um I'm a musician I'm a podcaster I'm an actress but first and foremost at this point I, I consider myself a filmmaker it's the thing I'm the most passionate about and the thing I want to do with my life for real like when I grow up <laughs> um for me like I I worked very closely with my cinematographer Sonia Sippen who's also one of my best friends um to achieve a, a like to have the camera be reflecting what sammy is feeling inside of her so much of it is internal and that can be really hard to you know photograph um so we discussed all the different ways that we could have the angles and the the framing and like feel a little off and start to go like off kilter or like um just unex in unexpected directions in those moments that are really pivotal for her to reflect how she's feeling internally because so much of it is just literally her eyes and the camera, you know, that's like all you got in that moment when she's like having those realizations. So it was really important to, to reflect that, yeah. I love it. And I, I, I gotta tell you, I love the uh, tease of an ending that you gave us there, which is not quite an ending. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you a couple things that I ask every guest that I have the pleasure of, whether they're first time director or Michael Shannon, who's been on the channel. Uh, I wanted to ask you, the first one is, who do you look to as inspirations, whether it be through your music as a filmmaker, as a human being, as a podcaster, who are some people that you look at as inspiration? Ooh, why do I feel like no one has ever asked me that question? That's uh, great. Um, well, filmmakers, I really, I mean, I really love um, Lynch and Cronenberg, my Davids. Um, I love Lynn Ramsey. I love Paul Thomas Anderson. I love Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, I'm like a Lars von Trier gal as well. Um, that's just on the filmmaking side. On the music side, I mean, the, it would it runs the gamut. I've always always like been very much inspired by Fiona Apple. Um, very much inspired by old jazz singers, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, and then also just like people who's, who are really pulling off the multi hyphenate thing are, um, always people that I'm going to like look to and kind of hold up as a beacon of what I want in my life and creative career. You know, I love that. My co-host, uh, of our podcast, which we do have a podcast. She's right over there in the background. Chase, someone, <laughs> she would love you because she's a huge, uh, Bontrier Lynch. In fact, our September podcast, and this is uh, new to everybody who hasn't known, it's going to be about David Lynch. It's going to be focused solely on Whoa. David Lynch. So you're welcome to come on if you want to, Lobe. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be talking all things David Lynch, and it's going to be awesome. And I'm so glad that you picked those. I, I, I love Fiona Apple, so I love that you picked that. Um, she does a cover of my favorite Beatles song, Across the Universe, and it's the best oh, version of Across cover. the Universe. Yeah. It's the best version of that song. It's also in one of my favorite movies, Pleasantville. So I love that you did that. Oh, <laughs> nice. This next question is the hardest question you're going to get asked all day, and I get so many great answers to it. Yeah. You can only watch two movies for the rest of your life. What two and why? Ooh, I know the first one because it's been the same, like, it's basically held up for the past, for half of my life at this point. So I think it would continue to hold up, which is Eternal Sunshine, which... I feel like is, I feel like that's a generic answer. Honestly, I feel like everyone says that, but I fucking love that movie with like every fiber of my being. Um, so that one. Um, oh, what's the second one though? What's the second one? <sighs> um, what do other people say? I have to know, what's yours? Oh, so, okay. Full disclosure, my favorite film of all time is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So you just go. made my day. That's <laughs> one of my movies. 
we love that movie here. We stand that movie 100%. That mm-hmm. is the best movie ever made. I love it. I'm so That's glad that you love it. Yeah. Oh my God, why did I not say Charlie Kaufman? 100% Charlie Kaufman would be one of the people who like 100%. He just seems like so on another level that I will never get to that I like can't even consider him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I'll never be as good of a writer as him. Like that's just never going to happen. It's I'll funny. Try. It's funny because my favorite director of all time is Spike Jones, who started out as a music video director. Um, so yeah. I'm glad that you said that you're working on music videos because that's the way to start. I mean, some of the most iconic music videos of all time are Spike Jones. I, I, Spike Jones is incredible. Like, yeah, incredible. He really uh, is. By the way, my second uh, Desert Island movie would probably be uh, It Happened One Night. Okay. Okay. It's a good, it's a good combo you have there. I feel like um, if I'm being real, the two movies that I go to for comfort are like pretty embarrassing but that I know for a fact that I can watch them over and over and over again. Um, one of those movies, I'm just going to say it, it's Practical Magic. Uh, oh, hell yes. <laughs> yeah, the witch movie. Hell yeah. The girly rom-com witch movie. So yeah. I love rom-coms and I love Practical Magic. So I, I'm notorious for being a apologist for romantic comedies whenever they one. come out. And I love Practical Magic. That's that's Nicole Kidman and Sandra Bullock as witchy sisters. I love that movie so much. Great choices, Lola. I love it. Yeah, that made you. my day. That made my day because you picked a great, my favorite movie of all time and a fantastic romantic comedy. So yeah, we're, we're basically friends now. This is a Perfect. fantastic job. Uh, okay. So this movie is screening at Fantasia, which is in Canada, and Holly Shorts, which is in LA. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. And yes, Montreal. Goes on, yeah. Montreal and LA, right? Yep. Perfect. If you guys aren't at Fantasia, you should be. It's the one of my favorite festivals of the year because it's one of the best genre film festivals in the world. And Holly Shorts is the best shorts program in the world. They always play the best shorts, and that's how you know this is a great film. Can you tell us what else you've got coming up? I know that you've got a new single coming out on August 8th. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's called Trust Me. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, it's the same name as my podcast. Um, it is a new song that I wrote. I have not released a song in two years. Um, it's about my OCD and anxiety. And um, I also filmed a short film to accompany it. That's It's a music video, but it is also a full length like narrative short film um, that I shot in Norway. And that will be coming out shortly thereafter. That looks so, it looks so cool. I love it. And I love the uh, art style that you chose for it, uh, just based on everything that I saw. Because I do my homework before somebody comes on here a little bit. Uh, and you're also featured in a brand new Netflix doc that's coming out called How to Be a Cult Leader. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so through my actual life experience, believing in a cult leader as a child, um, I have a podcast about uh, about cults and extreme belief, which is also called Trust Me. And as you know, through doing that, I just have made, I've interviewed so many people who used to be in cults, so many wonderful, awesome people, um, and learned a lot about it. So I was asked to come on the show and be, you know, someone speaking to that experience and speaking to how cult leaders operate. So I will be in um, multiple episodes of that series coming out very soon. I, I love that. I love that. And I did not know that about you being a part of a cult. That must have been very, very interesting growing up. Uh, that way uh the only cult i ever got near was the catholic church uh and I got know. out of that <laughs> good for you <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm hispanic so it just sort of you know it part happens the... yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's part of the dna unfortunately i love it thank you so much for spending time with me today uh, lola you've been amazing your short is fantastic and it is the second time i've seen something come out of someone's mouth like that uh this year in a short film oh wow yeah well, i'm gonna have to beat up whoever else has that so oh uh, your your short is slightly better the other one was called strings it was also very good but yours is actually better so okay, thank you <laughs> uh I, actually it came out of her eye i shouldn't say mouth because it comes out of her eye in the movie like as oh, an okay. eyelash that she keeps pulling oh interesting yeah wow. it's crazy i i don't know what's going on there is there anything you want to plug before i let you go um, I am on Instagram at Ula Lola, and my website is lolablanc.com, and everything I do will be on the, in those two places. 
Well, you see that? You guys can go ahead and follow her on all those socials, and maybe we can sucker her into coming onto our podcast in September to talk David Lynch. We'll have to get that oh, done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we are, for, for Film Slop Reviews, this has been William Lola. Pleasure having you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You too.